Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Welcome back to Fox and Friends. Over 140 Christians were killed in Nigeria by jihadists over the Christmas holiday, marking another deadly weekend in West Africa as Christians are practically being hunted for sport. And while the world looks the other way, Nigeria was marked the worst country in the world for Christian persecution last year, according to the International Christian Concern. Here to react, President of the Congress of Christian Leaders, Reverend John Moore. Reverend, thank you for joining us on this very important and very underreported story. From my understanding of the stats, um, a Christian is killed every two hours in Nigeria. Um, it's astounding. Why don't you just tell us what is going on? Why are Christians being hunted down um, and killed and kidnapped and their churches burned in Nigeria specifically? Well, first of all, it depends on who you ask. If you ask the Christian community in, in, in Nigeria, and, and this is the largest country in Africa, the biggest economy in Africa, a democracy nonetheless, that's basically 50% Christian, 50% Muslim, and every single Christian in the country will tell you they're being targeted because they're Christians. Right. And the unmentionable things are happening to women, children are being killed in grotesque ways, every church they can find is being burned down, whole villages being burned down. It is basically a hundred times worse than anything you've seen. In fact, you know, the the 140 people that were that were killed over Christmas, since that happened, over the last week, another four villages have been annihilated entirely. So if you ask the Christians, they say we're being targeted because we're Christians. They want to ethnically, religiously cleanse us. If you ask the Department of State, they're going to say this has nothing to do with religion. In fact, just this just this last week, the Department of State reversed yet again a Trump administration decision to designate Nigeria as, as one of the world's foremost persecutors of, of religious people, of, of Christians, because they believe the reason why this is happening is, wait for it, climate change. The AP said this is happening because of climate change. It's absolutely astounding, first of all, that the Trump administration first designated Nigeria, rightfully so. The, uh, they, they called it the worst violator, Nigeria, the worst violator of religious freedom in the world. And just as 140 Christians were massacred over Christ Christmas, and we know 52 thousand in Africa since 2009 have been killed. Now, the Biden administration just this month decides to reverse that. And, and now the media and the State Department are saying it's climate change. Why are they, is it that they're pushing climate change and they're trying to, you know, take these tragedies and, and push their agenda? Or is there something else that they don't want to in any way implicate Muslims or, or somehow downplay the conditions? Uh, why would they want to downplay the conditions and the brutality against Christians? It's a combination of things. I mean, the, one is that. One is the fact that plenty of Muslims around the world are blinking red lights in saying that there's a piecemeal ISIS-like caliphate being formed in Western, Western Africa. And, and by the way, the whole of the African continents. 
in trouble. You have a civil war in Sudan. You have a, a, basically a line of coups all across the continent. And in the Western side, uh, you have the, these jihadist organizations that are forming. And by the way, Nigeria, which is the biggest, most powerful country, is a country we, the United States government, our, our taxpayer dollars, right. gives a billion dollars a, a year to. And so, you know, but also it's, it's unfortunately, this Department of State doesn't have much to show for, for anything. I mean, we have the worst hostage crisis uh, in modern American history. We have more Americans killed by, by terrorists. Uh, since since 9/11, we have the Afghan with, withdrawal. We have you know war in Israel, war in war in Ukraine, civil war in Sudan. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Matthew 5:10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is en route to the Middle East again. His fourth trip there since fighting between Israel and Hamas broke out on October 7th. The State Department says Blinken is aiming to prevent the conflict from spreading while expanding humanitarian aid and reducing civilian casualties. Meanwhile, the Israeli military says it has completely dismantled Hamas's military framework in northern Gaza. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Turkey to a Middle East in trouble. He'll be playing the role of firefighter as he tries to extinguish the conflicts popping up in the region. The worst fighting in Israel's north in nearly 20 years risks a new war. Today, Lebanese militants Hezbollah fired more than 60 rockets across the border. Israel responded with punishing airstrikes and artillery. Hezbollah says its attack is revenge for the assassination of a top Hamas commander in Beirut. In Yemen's capital, Iranian-backed Houthi rebels remain defiant in the face of Washington's warning to stop attacking commercial shipping. We will make the sea as we made the land, a graveyard for America and Israel, says this man. Today, the U.S. Navy announced it shot down a Houthi drone near multiple ships. And CBS News has learned the Pentagon is preparing plans to hit back at the Houthis, including strikes against targets in Yemen. Hamas's brutal attack three months ago sparked the crisis. In southern Gaza, Israeli forces advance. Their main focus now is Khan Yunus. Airstrikes pound the city. Nearby, Palestinians dig a new cemetery. The old ones are already full. More than 100 hostages remain in Gaza, Robert, including six Americans. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will likely work for their release while also pushing to get more desperately needed humanitarian aid into Gaza. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. As Iranian proxies continue to bait the U.S. military, the Biden administration seems to be pursuing the same strategy in the Middle East that it has in Ukraine, what some say is an overly cautious approach for fear of escalation and a wider war. The U.S. has positioned more than 11,350 military personnel to the Middle East since October 7th to deter a wider Mideast conflict. On Thursday, after 121 attacks on U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria, the U.S. sent a drone to kill the Iranian-backed Iraqi militia leader it says planned those attacks. In response, Iraq's prime minister vowed to ask U.S. troops to leave his country during a speech to mark the fourth anniversary of the U.S. assassination of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad. We affirm our firm and principled position in ending the existence of the international coalition 
after the justifications for its existence have ended. The U.S. has 2,500 troops in Iraq. They were sent there in 2014 to protect the Iraqi government as ISIS was closing in on Baghdad. ISIS still maintains a presence in the region, and that is exactly why U.S. forces are in Iraq and in Syria. ISIS claimed responsibility for the twin suicide bombing in Iran that killed nearly 100 mourners heading to Soleimani's grave. U.S. officials say the latest signals intelligence suggests an ISIS offshoot in Afghanistan carried out the attack. Iran's president blamed the U.S. Our enemies can see Iran's power. Our forces will decide on the place and time to take action. Meanwhile, in the Red Sea, Iranian-backed Houthi forces were given a final warning to stop attacks on international shipping. In response, the Houthis launched an unmanned sea drone full of explosives Thursday. The Houthis warned today any countries joining the U.S.-led maritime coalition in the Red Sea will be targeted. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Pulled from the rubble following yet another day of strikes carried out by the Russian military, Ukrainian authorities say cities across the country were targeted. In Zaporizhia, a residential building was damaged, forcing its residents out into the freezing cold. I saw that there was going to be an air raid and bombing, so we quickly, quickly ran to the bomb shelter. Later we got a phone call and found out what happened to the building, but we were in shelter at 7 a.m. If we were at home, nothing good would come out of it. Rescue workers delivered aid and told residents they would cover the blown out windows. In Kyiv, residents rushed to shelters, but there were no reports of any missiles hitting targets in the capital. This has become a regular occurrence when air raid sirens are sounded. Last month, Kyiv was hit, killing more people across the capital. In Krivery, one woman was killed and children were among the wounded. Authorities there say a shopping center and residential buildings were hit. Ukraine says 59 cruise and ballistic missiles as well as drones were fired by Russian forces. It claims 26 were intercepted. More than half managed to get through. Ukraine has not said whether any of its military sites were hit or if it suffered any military losses. Since December 29th, there's been an increase of aerial attacks carried out by both sides and there's no sign that there will be a let-up in strikes anytime soon. Russia plans to conduct a total of seven intercontinental ballistic missile tests this year. Sputnik News reported the announcement by the Russian Ministry of Defense, which also revealed that the strategic missile forces have conducted over 20 ICBM launches as part of advanced missile system testing and missile training in the past five years. Since the invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Russia has occasionally hinted at possibly using nuclear weapons and has conducted large-scale nuclear exercises involving the deployment of ICBMs. Last month, Russia claimed that the development of the next-generation ICBM called RS-28 Sarmat, capable of carrying multiple warheads, will soon be completed. Throughout the scriptures, terrible times are forecast to the end of this present age. The prophet Isaiah describes the earth as empty and wasted. Isaiah 24.1 Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants. In the book of Revelation, we read of an hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. The Lord Jesus warns us of great tribulation, which shall threaten the survival of all life on earth. Matthew 24, 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The Apostle Paul speaks of sudden destruction that shall come just when men are saying, Peace and safety. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 For when they say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. As these verses indicate, along with current events, 
make it plain that world conditions will be characterized by chaos, destruction, and death just before our Lord returns to take control of planet Earth. In the book of Revelation, we read about the poisoning of the oceans, the burning up of the grass and the trees, and the sun scorching people with great heat. The book of Revelation also tells us that horrible plagues will afflict mankind. There will be widespread wars and famines, and that the atmosphere will become so polluted as to reduce visibility by one-third. In the midst of all this devastation, the Earth's population will flee to the caves as people cry to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of Him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What could possibly bring about such universal carnage on the earth? Is the Bible describing a nuclear holocaust? Nuclear weapons appear to be specified in Zechariah 14.12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. The book of Joel gives us detailed imagery that describes something so huge that it seems to encompass the earth and the sky. It is made up of fire and pillars of smoke and is so vast that it darkens the sun and reddens the moon. Joel 2, 30 and 31 And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Beyond this concrete structure lies Sudanese territory. Aid officials say on a daily basis they still register between 200 and 300 new refugees who come into eastern Chad. Over the past seven or eight months we've seen hundreds of thousands, in fact more than 600,000 Sudanese refugees displaced by the ongoing fighting inside Sudan who have crossed this way. And that added to more than 600,000 other Sudanese refugees displaced by earlier conflict in Western Darfur, numbering at more than 600,000 uh, people. Now United Nations and other aid agencies are saying that they have only one month food supply left to help 1.2 million people in this part of Eastern Chad. In addition to uh, cases of malnutrition, pe uh, people who are actually needing assistance in other parts of Chad. Now, they say unless help comes their way, there won't be any food left to serve these people at the end of January. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. Across the Western Hemisphere, being hit hard by an upsurge in cases of dengue, environmental experts and health professionals point to climate change as being in large part to blame. Again, because of the change in the rainfall patterns, we are seeing that that is directly affecting people. With the world recording more hot days, drought conditions, sporadic rainfall, and rising sea levels, the Caribbean region is on the front lines of climate change and mosquito-borne diseases. The effects of climate change are on mosquito-borne diseases, and dengue is one that is of great concern, are complex. Um, because there's an interaction between climatic factors. The Caribbean is not the only Western region seeing a spike in dengue. According to the Pan American Health Organization, Caribbean and Atlantic Ocean islands have counted some 50,000 cases of dengue this year, contributing to more than 4 million confirmed cases across all of the Americas. 
That is a significant increase over the previous record. Brazil, Peru, and Mexico are reporting some of the highest case numbers. But here in the Caribbean, it is a continued upward trend that has health officials worried. Many research studies done in different regions of the world and globally, many studies now show that climate change is definitely making dengue worse. Public health expert James Hospitalis says some severe cases are a result of patients being infected with more than one strain of the virus, and there are four strains of dengue in all. In response to the upsurge in cases, health authorities are urging impacted countries to step up preparedness. Hospitalis says, with climate change here to stay, all regional governments must have robust systems in place to respond to dengue outbreaks. For almost a week, parts of England have been submerged. The banks of the three great rivers, the Seven, Thames and Trent, breached. As Storm Henk, then torrential rain, compounded the wettest half year on record. This is an aerial shot of Nottinghamshire where river levels are at a 20-year high. Many houses and businesses have been inundated with flood water. In Worcestershire, locals aren't letting the wet weather deter them from enjoying a pint at the pub. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is pleading with residents to heed the warnings. The roads here have turned to rivers. On West End Parade in Gloucester, residents were woken by water rushing into their homes. Do you want that big jacket I got you the other day? The Pegler family have come to rescue their elderly father who's trapped upstairs. Well, what can you say? What can he do? He's got to move out for as long as it takes. I don't know when he's coming back. Hopefully he'll come back. Take the time, do you? With the help of his son and granddaughter, 81-year-old Dennis made it safely out. Plenty of people have decided to grab their belongings, pack up and leave. But there are others who are sticking it out, staying in their homes and hoping that these river levels have peaked. But it's a constant battle. The pumps are on non-stop. It's fighting the, the elements of the seven until around about half past five this morning and then it came over into our property. Before. What's your plan today? Just keep it at bay as much as we can. The weather of the last week has seemed extraordinary, but in future it might not feel like it. Forecasts for climate change are that extreme rain events will become both more intense and more frequent. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. Luke 21:11, And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Startled and shaken, now at five, an earthquake rattles millions across Southern California, the second significant quake this week. This magnitude 4.2 earthquake was centered in the community of Lytle Creek in the Cajon Pass, where the San Andreas and San Jacinto Faults come together. It's been such a long time. Kara Torgerson was working behind the bar at Scotland's store when the nerve-rattling shaking hit. We were kind of frozen, just scared. The Lido Creek business sits near the epicenter. Some of the ceramic decorations in a coffee container fell off the shelves. Was it one jolt or a couple of jolts? Or it was one jolt and a rumble. <laughs> In Fontana, some easy listening music got a violent interruption and the family dog got a jolt when the living room shook. Up the road, workers at this Del Taco felt the quake. I was washing the dishes in the back and I started to feel the rumble and I just yelled earthquake and I peeked my head around the side 
and they all just kind of looked in shock. On Lido Creek Road, the quake was strong enough to cause rocks to fall from a hillside near Christina Hernandez's home. You could hear the roar, and that's one of the things that's probably the scariest. And we have a cat that just came flying down the stairs from the second floor and zipped around and was meowing. And, you know, the animals were really shaken up. We were too. The quake measured 4.2. I can tell you it felt a lot stronger than that. Wow. It was really quite the shake. We thought, is this the big one? Is this the big one coming? You know what I mean? There are five earthquakes that occurred during the seven year tribulation, three of which are called great earthquakes. The largest and final earthquake to ever rattle planet Earth takes place during the last half of the seven year tribulation, as we read in Revelation 16 17 through 20. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. The market that stood here for centuries was erased in only hours scarring the town of Wajima, just 20 miles from the epicenter of the earthquake. Days later, it's still smoldering. The earthquake brought down the power lines and the buildings, and then the fire destroyed it all. The fire moved quickly, leaving little time to escape. This woman says neighbors were calling out, but no one could help them. With more than 200 people still missing across the quake zone, rescue crews are going door to door. A woman in her 80s was rescued here yesterday, pulled from under her collapsed house where she had been trapped and conscious for days. But with the critical 72-hour window to find survivors now passed, hope to find others is fading. The powerful 7.6 magnitude earthquake triggered a major tsunami warning along Japan's western coast. Tremors so forceful, experts say the land moved up 13 feet in some places. You see this break wall here? The water is on the wrong side of it. The ground shifted sideways by over three feet. Landslides have rearranged the landscape. There have been hundreds of aftershocks. <laughs> Our journey to ground zero took hours along buckled roads, some too broken to pass. Along the way, we stopped at villages that were heavily damaged and eerily empty. A lot of the old historic homes in this area, the ones made with traditional materials, would have seen a lot of earthquakes before, but this one was so powerful, they just crumbled. Most of the residents in the area are elderly, we were told. It's unlikely older homes will get rebuilt. Back in Wajima, little was untouched by the quake, according to officials. This building on its side at an intersection, the traffic light underneath still working. More than 10,000 people are now living at evacuation centers. We're making over a thousand meals a day, this volunteer says, I'm happy to help. Japan is a country well prepared for earthquakes, but it will take years to rebuild here and likely longer to recover. Isaiah 24, 19 through 21. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, it shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. Fresh controversy over gender transition treatments for children. The list of states is growing as they take up bills to stop or limit those procedures on children. West Virginia's ban is now in effect. And that makes 22 states, which now have those laws on the books designed to protect children. Courts are blocking a few of them from taking effect at this point. In Ohio, Republican Governor Mike Devine shocked some conservatives when he vetoed a ban on trans treatment for kids. I cannot sign this bill as it is currently written. This bill would impact a very small number of Ohio's children. But for those children who face gender dysphoria 
and for their families, the consequences of this bill could not be more profound. Those words from the Governor DeWine, but the Ohio House is coming back from its winter break early to try to override his veto. One detransitioner explains why she thinks the bill is critical. Parents don't have a right to abuse their children. This is no different from any form of abuse. This is the sterilization and mutilation of thousands of children happening within the state that he is being entirely complicit in. He has made the choice to continue this. God gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin, as we read in Matthew 18, 6 and 7. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Chloe has been phenomenal, and not just in the state of Ohio. She's traveled the country sharing the horrors, really, of her story. Uh, the realization that what she and her parents and her family and, and really people, young, young adolescents around the country continue to go through is nothing short of child ab abuse. Uh, so her voice in Ohio and, again, across the nation has been incredibly impactful, and I'm proud to be in this fight with her. And what is the fight going to be like in Ohio if they overturn that veto by government? Governor DeWine. Well, uh, what we saw from Governor DeWine is we saw he was compromised. Uh, he received over $40,000 in finances and money from pro-trans hospitals, hospitals that are performing these surgeries. Mark 836, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Uh, so I believe the votes are there. Uh, that was shown on the first round when this bill initially got through before it got to the governor's desk. And as long as these people don't become compromised like Governor DeWine was, uh, I believe this will have no issue getting passed. And that's how the majority of not just Ohioans, but the majority of Americans feel. The USA <laughs> Boxing has introduced a new policy which will allow trans boxers who were born as men to compete with women if they meet certain hormonal standards. And USA Boxing justified the decision, saying, quote, the purpose of this policy is to provide fairness and safety for all boxers. But critics don't buy that. Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert called the move pathetic and disgusting. MMA fighter Clarissa Shields says the policy is not the right decision. One pro-female boxer posted, it's politically incorrect to have a man fighting a woman. Of course, we all know this. Anyone who, I mean... You don't even have to have a science degree to know this. This is basic common knowledge. And let me be the first to say, women are, are not just a testosterone level, and we're not just men who merely don't have male genitalia, which is the policies the USA Boxing has in place now. Uh, of course, we know in regard to this topic, we know about the unfair competition aspect. But the safety of women has been compromised by USA Boxing's new policies and guidelines. I think my biggest problem with this, this new implementation is now we are glorifying men. We're calling them champions. We're giving them titles. They're winning prize money for punching women in the face. That's the purpose of boxing or any MMA, any fighting sport uh, that requires physical contact like boxing does. We're glorifying that and we're calling it progressive. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now 
and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.